this is my revival of my first Let's Play series, but it's not quite a revival and more of a rendition, or not rendition, hmm. let's call it a modification. This series is, once again, going to be showcasing Better Than Buildcraft, but also going to be doing, I'm also going to try covering mods are compatible with Better Than Buildcraft. And I'm hoping to get as many mods as I can that work together with Better Than Buildcraft. And if enough of them work together, I m might try to get permission to make a mod pack out of it. Don't know if that'll work or not, but I can find out. Anyway, let's get going. Now, some of the stuff was created with creative mode. And then just plopped into this world. This village occurs naturally. You spawn right over there, and I will have the world seed at the bottom of this video. It's a pretty nice world seed. Because you spawn in a three biome area and right here right here is a zombie spawner I may not always be a zombie spawner but for me it was that is perfect and actually I have to <laughs> switch my game back to normal mode because I was back in the creative world going back and doing some testing This is my zombie spawner control system. And while I'm in this building, I can click zombies up at the top to just gather experience points. Or I can send them to a saw right down there. And I will get a bunch of loot. Which I have let it test, and I've got a lot of loot out of it. In fact, let's turn the system on, leave grind off, and we will watch and see if they come up. Come on. Get down here. There we go. So they will float all the way up to the top, gather up there, and, well, actually they won't gather up there. They'll gather over here. And we'll wait a couple seconds. Now the experience collecting one is pretty fun. Because, well, one, I got all these creeper face sandstone around it. And yes, I'm using default Minecraft textures. I should have mentioned that right away. I might do another texture pack for this, but I'm a little bit lazy at modifying them to include most mod items. Anyways, hit the switch. It pops up. Flip it back. You got your mob. And then you just kill them. I have kept some of my old items. See, just fairly basic protection for armor. Do, do, do. There we go. And this sword is actually new. I created it before I abandoned my series. Which it's a good thing I abandoned my series, otherwise I would have been stuck in the swamp, not doing much of anything. Let's go ahead and smelt all that down. This is well, a slightly more compact setup than what I had before. There's my kiln, my crucible, my stewing pot, which I can turn on to render 
or just leave it. You know, which I can leave on render or turn it off so it will just cook. Then of course there's the safety lever for the saw. Everything's run by that one water wheel. The windmill is just for decoration. Although I have learned that in a desert your windmill never breaks. Here's the pottery system again. All set up just like it used to be. I forgot what it's currently set on, but quick check. Oh yeah, set on urns. That's good. Ah, it's already getting to be nighttime. The entire city is surrounded by this wall, and it is mostly safe inside. This is my storage area. And it's a little bit more organized than my old one was. Everything's kind of color coded, but not really. Oh, keeps my phone. That never fails. My phone never starts going beep until I start recording. Kind of sad, really. Alright, turn that down. What is clicking? Oh, and it's nighttime. All the villagers are going to be hiding. Oh, yeah, that clicks. Okay, continuing with our tour. We have the start of a refinery. We've got a bunch more tanks. And over here is where we're going to set up the refinery area. And now there's the heart of it. And just a bunch of gearboxes and axles. A couple engines to pump the, the oil out. It's all turned off right now because well, I don't want things pumping out. And yes, that's the wireless redstone mod. Which I'm glad it's still compatible after all the updates that have happened. Let's take a quick tour around the village. It's got a fairly modest size wheat farm. Why aren't you attacking me? Kill. To do. Anyway, very good sized wheat area. Which is perfect. I can keep up with my need for breeding cows without having to actually set up a wheat farm myself. And over here is the poo factory. It's got a basic setup like I was doing before. Dogs sitting on platforms, dispenser up above, and a detector to detect when the poo lands in front so it will automatically feed the dog. And it's actually a little bit nicer up above than it was before. See? got plenty of space. So if you really want, I can make a poo factory office. Not sure why I'd want to do that though. I'd rather just stay away from the poo. See, dispensers are still good with their amount of meat. <clears throat> and that is the number one main benefit of that zombie spawner. We will be able to keep up with feeding the dogs at all times. Do you want to move in with me? I'm not sure where you're going to sleep. Oh, I have two guests. <laughs> okay, you're my new librarian, and... You're Jim. 
Anyways, this is my bedroom. Got a few furnaces for smelting and cooking. A jukebox for if I find a record. A couple empty chests. And this is the rest of what I kept from my old world. I kept some soul forged steel, some soul urns, and I kept all the other urns I had. Yeah. See you later. Right, I am gonna get some sleep. See you in the morning. Okay. Let's go ahead. Sorry, I had to pause the recording for just a split second there. Anyway, let's go ahead and get some wheat for the next area we're going to go to. Replant. There we go. Let's see, I need to make a little bit of bread for myself. Did I remember a crafting table? No, I didn't. That would have been smart of me. But I am not smart. I just play at being smart. That's perfectly fine. I can just go in here and... Yep. No. No. There we go. Yep, I kept pretty much all of the wood I got from before Jungle Trees gave you the cherry wood, strawberry wood, which actually makes a somewhat nice floor in a sandstone area. Well, I like it anyway. Let's get myself some bread. <coughs> Excuse me. Clear my throat a bit. Covered the refinery. We are going to go outside the city walls. This is the next area I'm going to show. I've got two cows, two sheep. Now we're going to get them started on breeding. There we go. That is a weird effect that they added. Oh yeah, there is one weird glitch that I've seen lately. These red experience orbs show up when mobs die. And you can't collect them, and all they do is exist. Oh, looks like the quarry shut itself down. Out of fuel, I imagine. This is a much bigger quarry than I was making originally. For good reason. I will get a lot more resources, which I will need. Of course, I don't want a whole bunch of cobble and a whole bunch of dirt. And I've learned that for whatever reason, these do not go any higher than blue when I use these pipes. There. Which causes my quarry to function rather slowly. However, with two steam engines, it works fairly well. Could be better, but I won't complain. And a little bit of sandstone, sand. <clears throat> One thing I really do need to get done 
is pipe this over to my storage area. So I think we're going to go ahead and get working on that eventually. Just collect the sand and sandstone and the clay. We'll leave the gravel for now. Gravel can be useful to me now because with the hoppers you can filter gravel and get flint out of it. So your flint recovery rate when digging through gravel is basically 100%. You just have to take a small extra step. Let's see, how did you make these again? Is it? That's right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bit of a dry throat. And uh, put these walls up a little more. Man, that was a loud motorcycle. Or maybe that wasn't a motorcycle at all. It could have been an older car. I am starting to really like the look of sandstone as buildings. Oops. There we go. It feels kind of nice to be going back to a non-magical kind of play style. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the magic, but... It starts to become less like Minecraft after a certain point. That is a pretty noisy area. But let's go ahead and turn this thing back on, because there's some clay to grind. And I have some clay in here. There we go. Up and running. This keeps a nice beat. And there we went. There we go. Good amount of clay. Good clay. Is that clay glitched out? Or... You know, it is a little bit slow on the reset point, but I think if you judge by how many urns I have, you can agree that the slowness of this thing doesn't matter too much. Let's see, there's one other area I can show you quick, back outside the walls. It's going to be nighttime soon, so better hurry. Hop. There's a couple good things that have happened in the real world. I finally have a new mattress to sleep on, and I enjoy it quite a bit. It is a full-size mattress, which is an upgrade from the twin size that I've been sleeping on. Which, actually, that twin-size mattress has been in my family for a really long time, ever since I was little. Alright. One thing I didn't really do was make a permanent way up here. There we go. This is 
an oil well, which had a guys going up to where the pump was. And it should provide us a very good supply of oil for quite a while. And it just goes down through the hill and to my refinery. It's basically all it is. It's just an oil well. Now, what else? What else? What else? What else? I suppose they're not. There's not too much else to tour. I've pretty much covered it all. Mm, I suppose next stop will be my creative world. So I can show you a couple of the projects I'm going to actually be building. Let's just get inside quick. So I, so I don't forget what the heck I was doing next time. I'm kind of debating on making the upper part of my tower here a place where I can put remote circuitry. Basically I'll have a switch flip somewhere next to a redstone transmitter and the receiver will be in here and the circuit will be in here and the output of the circuit will be at the spot I wanted at. So in a way this will be a control tower. It's an idea. I'm not really committed on it yet though. But we're gonna hop to my creative world so see you there in just a moment. Alright so this is my creative world thus far. There's a portal of the nether for if I am trying to test things out in the nether. So far it's mostly been about growing plants. There's also one other thing. I was testing out that lens and seeing how it functions. And I have determined that <laughs> it will emit light out in this direction for so far an unmeasured amount of distance but if it encounters a entity or a block in front of it it will stop flight at that entity or block so you can see the light changing as I move back and forth Which I suppose this can work if you want to have a sort of laser defense, kind of like in the movies. But as I was saying, most of what I was testing has been about growing plants. I have determined that watermelon doesn't grow if there's a block above the stem regardless of sufficient light levels. And these were all attempts at making an automated watermelon farm. I also determined... Oh, hey, it did grow. That's freaking weird. This took like... 10 Minecraft days and didn't do anything. I don't know why that didn't activate it though. Regardless, there is better designs out there, such as this one, which seems to break when you exit your world. But I can demonstrate how it works. Just gonna grab a melon quick. Basically, a melon will grow, and it will pop the melon up, break it, and then the glowstone will shove it off. 
I saw this in a video by Potose. And I modified that a little bit into this contraption here, which I tested out with the builder and architect table to see if I can simply make a blueprint and rebuild it anywhere I want. Mostly I can, except for the fact that the torches and wiring get messed up. Otherwise it works perfect. This is the gut of the machine. Just simple. Sort of. Really it's a little bit complex. I know of a friend that it'd make their head explode or something. And a couple of melons had grown in here, but it did that whole leg leg out glitch thing. But it all works the same. Um, except for that. I think something's wrong with the wiring in here. Let me check. Uh, yes. Yes, there is something wrong with the wiring in here. Which brings me to a mod that I have not mentioned I have installed yet. Vertical redstone. Works great. I can have my redstone go vertically on things so I can have more direct circuits and compact spaces instead of doing a redstone torch ladder. I'm going to do the same thing for each one or... Nope, that one's still there. Anyways, all works the same. Just shoves the melons off, they land in the water trough. Oh, that one just went. I don't think the thing worked though. Yep, that's got the glitch too. This one's got it though, right? Yes it does. So, this is going to be my main source of watermelons. There's one thing I need to add, obviously. <laughs> Just a simple glass pane run down the center. That should prevent any melons from going. Let me through. Should prevent any melons from going over and landing in the opposite melon farms grid, causing it to seize up. And everything still lands in the trough, so that's perfect. And I don't really know why I'm adding these, it's just it's just my creative world and we're never gonna see it again most likely. Um, get that sandstone back. Well we're not gonna see it again in the creative we're gonna see it again in my main world. The next thing I was trying to do was make an automated wheat farm. Which I had never tried to do before. So I was kind of clueless as to what I was doing. I was trying to put a block dispenser up above the wheat and realize that that won't work because wheat needs an airspace above it to grow. So this idea was scrapped. And then I came across the video on the Better Than Wolves main website for a wheat farm. And basically the way it works is you have these block dispensers filled with wheat seeds and they will dispense their wheat seeds onto the planter. And it's all connected to this buddy block which will detect if there's a block update next to it. Like so. As you can see there, it works 
perfectly fine. And it does not suck up any of the wheat that is not fully grown. So this is going to be my wheat farm, and it's very compact and modular. And only uses one water source block. For those of you who really like hardcore bucket mode, you can easily put a spout right over there at the very end, and it worked the exact same way. Don't know why you'd play it with hardcore bucket mode, that's ridiculous to me, but teach their own, right? Um that's about it for my creative world. But there is one other thing I do want to get to. I have the most recent edition of Clay Soldiers, which adds this fun new toy to the game. I'm also using the crafting guide instead of recipe book because I enjoy being able to use the set item feature. In fact, let's find It uses a diamond, so here we go. Clay Nexus. Two soul sand, two balls of clay, a diamond, and four obsidian. Now, there's a couple great things about this. One, it looks a little bit neat for decoration. Two, If you power it and put items in it, like leather, flint, some snowballs, let's say, sugarcane, stick, and any color of clay soldier that you want. Oh, I'm going to go with pumpkins. And if you want, you can give them a mount. I'll give mine some bunnies, because those are new. So our get goes, but... Anywho... It doesn't work if you put the redstone torch right next to it, and you can't put the redstone torch right on it. You have to have the redstone torch and wire going to it. It might work if you put a redstone torch beneath it, like below the block so it powers the block. I have not tried it. But you put the clay soldier in the spawning area and the mount in the mount area. And you give them the items that you want them to have. And it will only take one of each item. So you don't need to put in like a stack there. Then there's this configuration tab which lets you heal the clay nexus. Um, I haven't seen it destroyed yet but I assume that's for if it gets broken. This will let your clay soldiers get random items from what you put in the chest. This this is a toggleable length for the wave duration. In other words, how often clay soldiers will spawn. We'll go five seconds in between and three soldiers. And we'll do only 12 soldiers on the field. Random value for soldiers getting no item. Don't really know what the difference between numbers are. I mean, let's. I will learn how to use that one eventually. But as you see, now there is a 
orange crystal in the clay nexus. And you turn it on, and in about five seconds, we'll have pumpkin soldiers on bunnies. And as you see, they're holding sharp sticks, wearing leather armor, and they have snowballs in their hands. And when you break them, they completely disappear. Now, one fun thing about these, let's turn the game to normal difficulty. They function exactly like regular clay soldiers. Where if you attack an enemy, they will attack that enemy. So, in a way, you have a guard system that you can turn on and off. Of course, you're still left with soldiers hopping around. So you're going to need your clay disruptor in order to get rid of them. Let's see, where is that one at? Why you know a text line? Yeah, seriously? It's rain like every single day in my creative world. Don't like it. Really don't. <laughs> Stupid Enderman. <clears throat> so, with this clay nexus, I'm going to be redoing my clay tournament and it's going to be a capture the fort kind of series so be looking for that in the future but I think I'm going to end this episode here it's just a reintroductory episode welcome back welcome back bear them build craft welcome back clay soldiers Welcome back, doing Minecraft slightly technical. I'm going to try installing a different mod each week. The first week, it's just going to be me doing Minecraft like I used to do. Next week, I'm going to see... Ooh, fire circle over there. Lightning circle. I'm going to see which mod I'm going to try installing. I already know Red Power is no-go, which is really sad. I would have loved to have been able to create a computer network for all this stuff. But, oh well. Beggars can't be choosers. I'm assuming Industrial Craft is also not going to work. Which is fine with me. If I want to do a high-tech let's play I'll start that separately but let's go away from the ground I am going to cut the episode here now and I hope you guys look forward to seeing the series back on track and if you do, give a like, fave this video, and subscribe to see when the new episodes come out. And leave a comment below on any mods that you want to see me showcase. And I will showcase them whether they're compatible with Better Than Millcraft or not. I will make sure to mention if they're not compatible and use a clean Minecraft to do it. And if they are, they might just get stuck in with my series. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Take care.